The world is full of people who will die in a place where they never expected to live. That is the first sentence of the introduction to a new book about a not-so-new story. The arrival of tens of thousands of Bosnians to St. Louis, starting in the early 1990s. One of the important distinctions between an immigrant and a refugee is that whole notion of choice. The Bosnians that came to St. Louis were refugees fleeing a terrible war and the worst European genocide since World War II. Bosnian St. Louis Between Two Worlds is a new book published by the Missouri Historical Society, written by two men who know that experience well. Patrick McCarthy, who has been helping Bosnians resettle in St. Louis since 1993, and who later personally went to Bosnia to deliver humanitarian aid, and Akif Kogo, a Bosnian refugee who has become the St. Louis Bosnian community's historian and archivist. It's very hard to say that there is someone in Bosnia that doesn't know someone or is not related to someone that lives in St. Louis. Um, just this past summer when I went to uh, Bosnia, it was very common to see several individuals a day in somewhere in the city that I live in, in St. Louis. Our future and our well-being is bound up with the success of these new American communities. And that's one of the things we wanted to uh, accomplish with the book, is to say, okay, well, let's look at one of these new communities. What were the struggles that brought them here? But ultimately, how have they enriched the life of St. Louis? Patrick McCarthy and Akif Kogo, thanks very much for joining us, gentlemen. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Your book in the preface asks the question that's the most logical to start with, which is why this book? And if I can add a question to it, why now? So the war in Bosnia started in 1992. Here we are in 2022. So we've got 30 years, which then starts to feel like history. You know, before that, it was almost current events. There's another generation, now a generation and a half, of Bosnians who have called St. Louis home. The initial refugees who came are having children and, in a lot of cases, grandchildren. So the timing seemed right. The other part was we didn't want to lose that window of opportunity in terms of the people who were the voices of the book, uh, those people who, who either helped refugees when they first came, and also the refugees themselves, um, unfortunately, they're starting to pass away. And so we wanted to um, honor their experiences, but also capture that unique uh, beginning story of how and why Bosnians came to St. Louis. And I would imagine, Akif, for you, it's deeply personal to write this book because you are Bosnian, Bosnian-American now, and uh, came here a, a little later than that first wave, uh, but you were there during the war. Uh, why was it important for you to get involved in this project? One of the primary reasons for my involvement in a project was to um, capture that uh, memory uh, from those that survived the war, that actually been in Bosnia during the war and uh, uh, preserve their stories for the future generations. Um, and, and the book seemed to be appropriate uh, medium for doing so. And um, I found it that, is, that was extremely important for me and to tell that story in a way that would um, honor them in a, in, a, in a sense, but also ensure that that is something that's been carried on for generations to come. You'd mentioned the war starting in 92, of course, 93, a year later, is when all the Bosnians really, in, in a large way, have started arriving in St. Louis. And I imagine people then and now are still saying, how did all of them end up in St. Louis? Right, because, you know, we think about St. Louis as being in the middle of the country. Refugees and immigrants tend to cluster on the coasts, but the presence of the International Institute here in St. Louis, which for almost 100 years has 
worked with immigrants and helping resettle them to St. Louis. More recently, beginning in the 1970s, when there were refugees who came from uh, the Indochina Wars, and then we've had a succession of refugees, including in the early 1990s, the Bosnian community. I think the International Institute would acknowledge they weren't fully aware of how many Bosnians would eventually come. And so the focus of their work throughout the 1990s, even into the early 2000s, was helping this large community of Bosnians come here, get resettled, um, orient them to the city, help them with English language, uh, helping to find jobs, uh, all of the things that are required for uh, the support of refugees. And one of, the, one of the important distinctions between an immigrant and a refugee is that whole notion of choice. Immigrants make a positive, affirmative choice to come to a place like St. Louis, whereas refugees don't have a choice. They're forced to come, um, and in that sense, they have a very different experience. Um, it, in a lot of cases, especially initially, people had never heard of St. Louis. Um, and so um, we, we trace those origins in the book from that initial nucleus of five families who came in February of 1993 up to today, where the estimates are 60,000 Bosnians here in St. Louis. Did they really know where they were going? Did they have any idea? By most part, we did not know where we were going. That included me. Um, I didn't have really a family here when I, fir when I first arrived. I did have an uncle that lived in uh, Chicago at the time and was proce in the process of moving to St. Louis, uh, but really didn't have any relatives, surprisingly, considering the number of uh, Bosnians that was already in St. Louis in 2001 when I arrived. Uh, but many, including myself, wouldn't be able to even pinpoint St. Louis on the map. Um, not that let's know anything else in addition to that. Um, so it, it really, that um, initial wave of immigrants that uh, later on movements were built on was really triggered by the help of International Institute, but also a small group of already, um, an already established group of Bosnians that lived in St. Louis prior to the war, those that came in the uh, uh, 50s, that came in the 60s, 70s, even 80s, um, they formed that nucleus basically that was assisting International Institute and that uh, resulted in basically uh, speeding up, but also making, uh, making St. Louis feel more of a home for those that were arriving uh, later on. There were a lot of people who helped. I was struck in, in the book by the story of a group of people who would go around looking for, I think it was lace curtains in the right. windows and right. shoes on the porch, I assume because of the well, Muslim. Well, it's telltale sign. Not just Muslims. I mean, the culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina is one where you would remove your shoes before entering a house. I think it's more typically associated with Muslims, but it's so it's a practice in South Slavic uh, households. So it's just practical. It helps keep the home clean, but it was for those of us who were working with refugees, you would go in these South City neighborhoods and you would see, you know, literally a pile of shoes and you knew, okay, that's, that's a Bosnian family that lives there. How difficult was that transition? Well, one important aspect of their arrival here as, as a refugees was is that uh, they were primarily arriving with fresh traumas. So quite a few of them arrived here uh, almost directly from concentration camps or some major events that took place in their personal lives that among the other things warranted their status of the refugees at the time. So the, um, the impact of the new environment for them was significant and a uh, new culture that includes a culture shock was also uh, very significant and the, the lifestyle in general uh, getting used to um, the areas that they were living in conditions that they were living in all of that combined presented a huge huge um, emotional psychological effect on, on them as, as new arrivals how did they end up in the Bevo area initially because I think most people if you say where are the Bosnians in St. 
St. Louis would say, oh, down by the Bevo Mill, they're still there. A lot of them aren't there anymore, but how did they end up there in the first place? Well, I, I think the initial um, the waves of the refugees, they were settling down in the areas of Grand um, and uh, Arsenal, in the state streets, and were slowly, they were move, moving slowly uh, towards south, and Bevo Mill, uh, Mill area, I think, was more so uh, relatable to them based on the German heritage of the, of the, the place, because of many Bosnians did spend significant time in uh, Germany, some of them several several years before coming to um, uh, the States. So that was the familiar factor for them. Um, and availability of the housing in that particular area uh, was fairly significant and that helped out uh, in, in terms of uh, getting affordable um, apartments at first and then purchasing affordable housing there. So those are the two factors that really play the key role in, uh, in uh, settling Bosnians around the Beaver Mill. And that really made it a positive for St. Louis, too, because that was a part of town that not much was happening, yeah, and what was happening wasn't I, particularly I good. Mean, those of us who were around in St. Louis remember there were mostly boarded up businesses. Um, there were neighborhoods that really had seen better days. There was uh, kind of a sparsity of people. And when, as the Bosnians gradually moved into those neighborhoods, they really brought back a neighborhood life. And um, they saw business opportunity in these vacant storefronts and started restaurants, cafes, uh, travel agency, small grocery stores, butcher shops. So all of the commerce to support the community that was moving in there. Um, and it was just like life came back to the Bevo area. And then the city government took notice of it. The, the, um, the alder persons from that area started to realize, wow, the, there's, there's a, a new life here. And landlords love those tenants because they had very good practical skills. They would fix up the apartments. So they were actually in probably better condition than when uh, the the Bosnian families had moved in there, so it was it was a real success story. But like a lot of other immigrant and refugee populations, you you continue to look for opportunity. And there were two things working against us in St. Louis: the school system and uh, the the crime in the city. And those are just perennial problems for all of us. Um, it it goes up and down, um, but I think we had an opportunity. Uh, and it's unfortunate that we, we couldn't hold on to uh, that large community of Bosnians, although it is true, um, people just seek that greater opportunity out in the county. So it's really now ready for the next, for the next uh, immigrant or refugee uh, population to come. That's a good thing for the city. You know, we're in a xenophobic frame of mind these days, but there's conflict throughout the world. Um, there are, you know, Afghani communities that have started to come to St. Louis. That should be, the, the Bosnian should be a template of how we could do it and how it would serve those communities and serve us as well. I always like to say, you know, we're, our, our future and our well-being is bound up with the success of these new American communities. And we're all essentially in it together because uh, when they do well, we all do well. Um, and that's one of the things we wanted to uh, accomplish with the book is to say, okay, well, let's look at one of these new communities. What were the struggles that brought them here? But ultimately, how have they enriched the life of St. Louis? And I think that's been true not only of Bosnians, but other immigrant and refugee communities. We're an immigrant city. In the 19th century, when the first Bosnians came, they weren't really Bosnian, but they were uh, you know, from the Austro-Hungarian period, so Germanic, but had been born in Herzegovina and came to St. Louis. They were, uh, lived on the north side. We trace that early community in the book, um, but we, we sometimes forget at that time, half of the population of the city of St. Louis had been born in a foreign country. So, this is an old St. Louis story in that sense, um, but it's one that's good for us to remind ourselves 
that's what creates this kind of vitality and renewing character to cities like St. Louis. Well, and many of them were quite well educated, I believe, correct, Aki? Yeah, absolutely. And we, uh, the predominant group of uh, Bosnian that, Bosnians that came to the um, St. Louis were younger, younger families, younger individuals, probably in their mid 20s to mid 30s by a large part, and they were educated, well, oftentimes college educated, or they had some um, vocational schooling that was very handy in terms of the the, um, the need that the St. Louis job market had at the time. So in, in that sense, we were able to very quickly adapt to the new environment. So there's been this diaspora from South St. Louis to South St. Louis County, I guess the Afton area. Mm -hmm. Afton, uh, Bayless, how, I mean how, school districts, yes. How big a wave was that move and what triggered it? There was a, a tragedy that helped trigger it, I guess. Yeah, there was. In 1998, there was a little girl named Selma Duchanovic who was uh, kidnapped and murdered by um, an American man, David Martin, who had been posing as a health inspector, giving bogus physical exams to uh, unsuspecting Bosnian females. And that really started, just as the community was feeling a sense of security and belonging, it really accelerated the exodus out of the city. And you can understand why. People who had come out of a war um, and thought that they were in relative safety for something like that to happen. And so the, our book is actually dedicated to the memory of uh, Selma Duchanovic and another, uh, another girl who was killed in the siege of Sarajevo. So how many Bosnians are left in the, in the city of St. Louis now, Aki? It's very hard to estimate that number, uh, but uh, starting in the uh, early 2000s, more and more people started moving out of the uh, city toward and then moving down south toward the, uh, St. Louis County, and then eventually into Jefferson County, and now we have um, uh, small communities of Bosnians in uh, Columbia area, as well as in Kansas City area. And um, I, w I would say that probably about 80 to 85% of Bosnians moved out of the city. And what we have uh, right now in the city is something very interesting in terms of demographics of those that stayed. And that is the primarily the older Bosnians that remained in the city, that were out of those that actually remained. They were primarily um, elderly Bosnians that are living there. Uh, one of the reasons is probably familiarity with the area and just that sense of belonging in that particular area more than anywhere else. And refusal to kind of uproot again and move elsewhere and um, I would say there, there's probably right around five to to ten thousand Bosnians that are currently living in the St. Louis city the rest of them are moved out of um, out, out in, a, in a county area did they take their businesses with them or have they left the businesses in the city and they go back and forth? Um, that, that is in a sense uh, hidden means those who recommend more to businesses by large part they remained in the Bebo Mill area or surrounding areas there um, but the new businesses that uh, they started new businesses in the county so in the Lima Ferry area there's a fairly uh, large stretch about mile mile and a half that it that has a significant number of Bosnian businesses now we have some um, businesses is also in the um, uh, Jefferson County in the Arnold area. Um, so that, that is moving as well. Those traditional businesses such as restaurants, part of them remain there, but uh, most of everything else kind of migrated as well. There's a very touching reference in the book to a, a woman who kept her house keys mm -hmm. from Bosnia. Mm -hmm. I assume with the thought that someday she would be able to go back. Hardly anybody went back. Hardly anybody was able to go back because right. of of conditions. Have any of them gone back? Do that most of them, given the choice, would they want to go back? In in terms of permanent going back, um, very few returned permanently. And statistically, in terms of uh, refugees or immigrants that arrived to the United States, very few return back regardless of where they're coming, uh, coming from. Uh, and the um, story of the Bosnian Americans is no different in that regard. Um, there are some num number of people that did return back. Um, we have uh, lately a wave of the um, elderly people that are getting into their retirement age once when they have retired from their jobs. They split their times between Bosnia 
in the cases where possible if they manage to build something over there or something along those lines they will split their time between Bosnia and uh, St. Louis um, and then there is a large number of those that are just remain here uh, families are growing as well so their um, son and daughters they have their son and daughters of their own so that is also one of the factors that kind of um, cements them in a sense in a place to ensure that they are spending times with those that they love those older Bosnians uh, who were in that first wave and who saw the worst of it when they were in the war-torn areas uh, it's been a long time now but do many of them still suffer from PTSD for instance uh, as a result of what they went through before they got here we have definitely a significant portion of our community that suffers some sort of uh, form of PTSD. Um, they are um, at the times uh, support groups for uh, folks like that, um, that they can address those um, um, issues that they may have. Um, but um, one important a segment of, of a Bosnian community here that that explains why is that we are um, a lot of those folks who are coming from the area where the genocide is committed where ethnic cleansing is committed where uh, mass rapes and mass murder took place so it would be surprising that it is actually surprising that that the um, levels of the PTSD in our community don't appear to be as high um, as uh, you one may think that there is and I think in addition to that that um, I believe that most of us if not all of us have some form of PTSD we might just have a high functionality PTSD and are able to function in a day-to-day -day, um, basis and then I, I know that most a lot of people do have uh, recurring dreams and and I think that the topic of war and those atrocities that we went through uh, is something that, that that is present and that they often think about it even though that they may not say it out loud they're thinking about it and it's subconsciously in their mind and every now and then especially in the cases of traumatic events that will surface. I keep wondering if um a lot of the Bosnian traditions were on what second or third generation now, really, since they started coming, uh, are starting to be lost. If the language is being lost, those traditions being lost. Well, right now we live in very interesting times. We live in times of social media and um, connectivity that is unlike anything the world had seen before. So when I first arrived to the States in 2001, if I wanted to keep in touch with someone back home, I would write the letters, postcards, occasional emails as the time was uh, going uh, passing by. Um, nowadays, the, the, the game plan completely changed. We have uh, Bosnian cable TV here. We are, have ability to FaceTime with the family members, with friends over there. Um, travel has never uh, never been as, as affordable as it is right now and never been as easy as, as, as it is right now. So those are the aspects basically of our um, culture, cultural identity that we're able to preserve because of those uh, aids in a sense that, that we have when on our uh, disposal and um, I, I think from that aspect it's much easier for us to keep our culture and keep connection to our culture now um, while we integrated in society here very quickly we are now getting into that second um, process basically of um, assimilating into a society we have a number of people that uh, especially children that don't necessarily communicate in Bosnian um, and we still have a little bit a, a little number a small number of adults that are not necessarily not speaking English were very well now those this difference were much more stark in the beginning as they're uh, in comparison to right now but they're still present um, and um, I, I think uh, from the cultural perspective as well we because of the numbers that we have here we're able to retain a lot more than if we were scattered uh, all over the United States so um, the um, social media and and um, our numbers here definitely are helpful in terms of us retaining our culture and uh, um, just generally living in a melting pot is something that it's not helping to that in terms of that retention I'm wondering, we were saying early on that a lot of them who were coming to St. Louis had never heard of St. Louis, which is entirely understandable. 
Um, but I'm wondering now in Bosnia if St. Louis is well known as that, that American city where so many of them went. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, s I hope we have a good reputation. Absolutely, yes. Uh, it, it's, it, it became, uh, you know, St. Louis is probably uh, fourth or fifth largest Bosnian city outside of the Bo uh, in, in Bosnia in general um, based on the number of people that live here of the Bosnian origin so it's very hard to say that there is someone in uh, someone in St. Louis or someone in Bosnia that doesn't know someone or is not related to someone that lives in St. Louis um, just this past summer when I went to uh, Bosnia um, I was brushing shoulders in the street with in the street with people that live here it was it was uh, so it, it was very common to see several individuals a day in somewhere in the city that uh, live in, in St. Louis so that that gives us basically an opportunity to assess the impact of the Bosnian community here to the life over there but also it, it answers basically that question of is a St. Louis known over there which is up with we can say with the utmost certainty that it, yes it is we began by saying why this book why now uh, I would assume at the time that you guys were writing it that we didn't have the situation yet in Ukraine mm -hmm. but the why now seems to be self-evident when you consider the situation the world finds itself in again and again it seems like we learn nothing from nothing right there are a lot of parallels with Ukraine one of the key differences though is the the world community or the Western countries have come to the military assistance of Ukraine which is important to um, help help Ukraine to defend its independence, to defend its sovereignty. In the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, there was a arms embargo that the UN placed on uh, Bosnia and the countries of the former Yugoslavia, which gave an overwhelming military advantage to the nationalist Serbs who who attacked Bosnia. So. The Bosnians had the unfortunate experience of having to do it with improvised weapons, um, kind of beg, borrow, and steal to defend themselves. And but like Ukraine, you know, there's a lot of sympathy, um, but there is, you know, we continue to see the effects of, of the Russian aggression in the same way that we saw the Serbian aggression. Um, those two countries are aligned. Serbia today is one of the only countries, uh, really the only country in Europe that is supporting Russia in its aggression. So it's, um, you're right, we haven't learned, you know, I said before, I was part of a generation that said never again. I think we now see that that's really a meaningless phrase, that we have to engage um, both with the sources of that violence, um, help refugees, um, and just uh, find ways to uh, defend a common, civilized world. Do you think that St. Louis has learned anything from this experience? As the new Afghan refugees are arriving to, to St. Louis, uh, we can see that there are lessons that have been learned, at least on the parts of those that are welcoming those refugees with open arms. Um, they're much more organized, they're better organized, there's a much a wider support system in terms of those uh, refugees, and um, their sensitivity to their needs particularly, and the ways of helping them. Um, in terms of uh, the more of a, of a government side of it I think we're still in a process of learning if anything changed and what level of support a new arrivals would receive in comparison to what we have in terms of Bosnians uh, but I think if nothing else the um, society in general in St. Louis um, open, is much more open to, to new arrivals and opportunities that they may bring or create when, when, uh, when they arrive here so I think that we become Came as, as um, St. Louis at large, we became a lot more acceptive of, of others and uh, um, their their um, and, and realized that the uh, their potential. Very good, Patrick McCarthy and Akif Kogo. Thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you for having us.